Hey guys, sorry I haven't posted in a while. I have been working on a super yacht and I'm here in Europe. Um, busy, busy, busy charter season. I wasn't able to edit anything. I used up all of my footage. So we're starting from here and we're starting from square one. Um, where am I right now? I am in Bordeaux. So that's a city in France. I just caught a taxi straight here and from what I saw it looks stunning so I can't wait to have a walk around. But the reason I'm here is to meet the director of Lagoon Catamarans, Thomas Gailey. So I was in the vicinity and he said, look, let's, uh, let's meet, we'll have some lunch, I'll give you a tour of the factory and let's just have an informal meeting. Um, there's been a lot of tension between him and I. Um, obviously, the video series that I did on my broken bulkheads affected Lagoon very negatively. Um, it wasn't my intention to um, give Lagoon a bad name or attack the company or attack uh, Thomas Gailey on a personal level. Um, but some of those things have happened as a result of people getting very fired up about this whole situation. I think I'm here just to hear him out and see what he has to say about the whole thing but um, I don't know what else to say guys I'm very um, curious as to how this is gonna go I'm nervous but at the same time I don't feel bad for anything I've done I've I do a weekly vlog and I show everything that happens in my life and I do it in an authentic way and I do it in the most honest way I possibly can and sometimes um, the truth kind of has hurt this company in this in this situation. These projects, what people go through when you see these things on YouTube or whatever, um, it's ten times harder than it looks. It's a crazy world, this social media thing, and a lot of people latched onto that series, and um, well, and a lot of people became aware of this bulkhead issue as well, and started checking their bulkheads and found cracked bulkheads. So through social media and through my YouTube videos. Um, I was able to bring awareness to um, many Lagoon 450 owners. I get so worked up about this. It just blows my mind that Lagoon owners, and I'll tell you why. It's because these guys are worried that the value of their Lagoon 450s will go down. It's true. Anyone who owns a Lagoon 450 that doesn't reinforce this bulkhead, your Lagoon 50, 450 is going to be hard to sell. And that's where we're at now. So, without further ado, I'm going to get some rest. I'm exhausted. I've got to get up in the morning. Uh, I'm going to meet Thomas at the factory. And we're going to go from there. But he's requested that I don't film anything. I just want to hear him out. And hopefully he'll hear me out my side of the story. And we'll see if we can um, walk out of this with maybe some positivity out of all of this. I'll probably see you tomorrow evening after the meetings. And I'll let you know how it goes. Good night. Parlez-vous anglais? Non. Um, Lagoon Catamaran? Catamaran. Lagoon Catamaran. Uh, Quai de Brazé? Quai de Brazé. Brazé. Okay. 162. Si, si, senor. Okay. Gracias. Hey guys, so I'm in the taxi and I am going to Lagoon Catamaran this morning to meet uh, Thomas. As soon as I get there, it's cameras off. I'm on my phone right now. Um, but I have to sign a confidentiality agreement and some other things so I won't be able to film anything the food in France is so good but it's so unhealthy <laughs> had a chocolate croissant for breakfast it's a very strained sort of interaction this one I'm sure but I'm gonna give it a chance while I'm here I'm guessing this is the river where they launch the lagoon catamarans We'll just see how this goes, if it gets a little bit too heated or I feel uncomfortable or um, anything like that, i got no problem just walking out of there. So anyway, I guess we're nearly there, so we'll see how this goes. CNB. This is... Catamaran, Naval. Okay, so I go inside and I meet and I go to the left. Okay, you go to the left, you, you follow the advertising, accueil, uh, okay. reception, okay? Okay, and can you let Thomas know I'm here? I will call him um, on the minute, okay? Oh, 
Okay, merci. Hey guys, I just got back from the factory. I've just put on something more comfortable and I'm gonna go walk around the town and check it out while I tell you what went down. Check out this one person elevator. It literally says one person only. So the first thing we did was a little bit of small talk, you know, like uh, how do you like Bordeaux so far, blah, 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 blah. We're both trying to feel each other out. Um, I didn't know how hostile he was going to be towards me and I guess he didn't know if I had any uh, hostility towards him. So we got that over and done with and then we started with the real topic of conversation which is the bulkheads. This is where it started to get a little bit uncomfortable because I started pressing him about whether he really was going to help all, all of the Lagoon 450 owners and uh, why a lot of the um, customers hadn't heard from their dealers or their dealers were telling them that um, they hadn't heard anything from Lagoon. It seems like there was this big um, miscommunication happening between Lagoon and the dealers and that's when he explained to me that um, France had been on a holiday for the last month of August so that's why basically nothing was getting done and uh, that kind of explained the silence. I had a good feeling after that initial conversation and then he offered me a tour of the factory so away we went. The Lagoon has three different factories and I was at the Lagoon headquarters where they happen to make boats from 50 to 77 feet. So I was at the factory where they make the big boys. So we started the tour and I was pretty amazed at what I saw. The organization of everything, all the boats were lined up and as they get more parts added to them they go along the production line and it was just incredible to see the amount of efficiency that they had established during this manufacturing process. The hulls are built and everything's pre-made and then put inside piece by piece and then finally the deck comes on and then it goes outside, the mast goes on and then they start the sea trials. But it was pretty impressive and once we saw some of the smaller boats we went and saw the 77 foot monsters and they are incredible. Lagoon 77 was the biggest catamaran I'd ever been on. It was crazy to see the size of the moulds needed to build these boats. The amount of glass and resin needed to build these boats is mind-boggling. There's even an option to get a jacuzzi with these boats, and one of the boats I saw was getting a full-size piano mounted in the salon. I pictured Parlay getting built within these walls almost exactly a decade ago and imagined how far the manufacturing process had advanced since then. There are a thousand Lagoon 450 sailing around the world at this time and they all originated right here in France. Those of you who have been following will know that I'm going to do whatever it takes to circumnavigate Parlay. And I became a little nostalgic at the thought of sailing her right into Bordeaux, where she was created after being around the entire planet. And of course, I checked the bulkheads on all of these new bolts, and they are made very differently, but they are also much bigger boats. So there wasn't much I could take away from that, 
other than the fact that these bulkheads looked a lot stronger than mine, but they were bigger boats. So Thomas gave me a really thorough tour and I'm so grateful because you don't normally get to do this unless you are buying a boat from the factory. So I was really lucky, it's hard for me to describe what I saw in that factory but I was very impressed and I come from a super yacht background so I have been around shipyards before. He did say though that once all of this bulkhead fiasco is passed um, he may give me an opportunity to make a movie in there at a future date. The problem with that is that a lot of their manufacturing process and the layout of the manufacturing plant is proprietary and they don't want their competition to see some of their tricks of the trade. So I would have to be pretty careful with what I film, which is why they have a no photo or no filming policy in there for everyone. I've got no internet on my phone, I'm completely lost and I love it. At this point we were starting to get really hungry so Thomas invited me out for lunch and he also invited Jean-Francois who is the director of sales for all of Europe and he's got a couple of other fancy titles which I didn't really understand but we went out for lunch and that's where we got down to the nitty gritty. This is where I explained to them that my series wasn't about protecting them. My series was about protecting other owners. I wanted to raise awareness about the bulkhead issue with the Lagoon 450. I think a lot of people are going to want to know how we did it and the lessons they can learn from what we did wrong. So, first thing you have to do, obviously, is knock these trims off. They are just glued on. Off they come. We just got a, uh, a rubber mallet and block of wood. Pop those bad boys off. And then this piece here is just screwed on, so that comes off. And then you inspect your bulkhead. But I never said that Lagoon was a bad brand. I never said that it extended throughout other models of Lagoons. I just told it exactly how it was with my boat. So it appears that the hurricane had very little to do with the actual structural issues of this boat. So this is my understanding of their perspective. There are a thousand Lagoon 450s out there. That is a lot of bulkheads. A lot of them are damaged, a lot of them are undamaged. And this company has to figure out what to do. The first thing to do is to categorize the boats and any boat that is still within warranty is getting repaired. No question to ask. Lagoon are already doing that. That's already happening now. The question lies with what do you, what do, you do with all the other boats? Some of them are over 10 years old. That is where it gets tricky and they're not willing to just write an open check for anybody who's got a Lagoon 450. They have to investigate each boat, each scenario, has it run aground, has it been through a hurricane, blah, 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 blah. But the bottom line is they will help every single Lagoon owner in, in one way or another. At a bare minimum, they'll give every single boat a personalized repair procedure, and they've promised me that they'll do that, and they are doing that. They're just having trouble coping with the volume of boats that, are, uh, that there are around the world. So that's my takeaway from all of this, guys. I believe they are good people. They've just got so much on their plate. This has been a really big blow to them. Uh, nobody expected this, nobody wanted this. So where do all you Lagoon 450 owners go from here? Contact your dealers, the nearest dealer that you have where you are right now, contact them, and you will get a, an answer from Lagoon. They've promised me that. But we are at the point now where even Lagoon are recommending that everyone, all Lagoon 450 owners, reinforce their bulkhead. And that's what I've said from the very beginning. That's what I wanted for everyone. I don't want anyone to go through what I went through. Even if your bulkheads are undamaged at the moment, reinforce them. And Lagoon can send you the kit to do it. It's a stainless steel bracket that goes over the whole thing. It's been stamped off by VPLP, the designers of the boat, the naval architects. Anyway. That's all I have to say about that. It's been a really interesting experience. I'm really glad I came. It cost me a small fortune to extend my trip and come out here for a few days. Um, this place is expensive. My hotel is a piece of shit and it was 150 bucks, 150 euros a night. But anyway, I'm really glad I came. But now it's time for me to go back to Panama to parlay.
lindo. Remember me, huh? Remember me, lindo? Remember me? <laughs> lindo, stay. Oh, did you match me? Oh. oh my god, so good to be back. It was so good to be back in Panama. I couldn't wait to get back to work. We had some fresh and exciting changes coming up on Parlay. We just needed to finish off her transom extension and a hard top, slap on some anti fell and Parlay would be finally back in the water again. It had been a torturous eight months in the shipyard and the thought of sailing again soon had me more excited than you could ever imagine.